Oh, maybe because I disabled it I can't find it? Or maybe it's under Verizon. There it is. See, it's grayed out because it's disabled. So you just go into the application information and you just go disable. Right now it says enabled because I've already disabled it. So then it hides it, but it doesn't allow you to uninstall it. Because those are pretty much the two applications that Verizon requires for new customers. So they can bring over their contacts and so they can track their data. And then there's the controversy between if they're going to keep in the settings area on the GSM version uh, this data usage thing. I haven't really found a good use for it myself. I mean, I set up for 5 gigs warning so I can tell when I get there, but I've been grandfathered in, so it's not a big deal, but you can set a warning so that the system will just tell you um, how much data you've used, and it'll actually tell you which applications have used what data in that certain amount of time. I set it up for my billing cycle, so this whole f graph is from the beginning of my bill cycle to the end. Obviously, I got the phone in the middle, so it doesn't matter, but it'll get real specific, and you can go into the application like Facebook, I'll tell you a pie graph of all this stuff and you can actually turn off background usage which is kinda cool and oh and you can in that you can actually check this box here it says disable data that means that when you reach your limit it'll actually stop pulling data in altogether so you won't go over on your uh, dedicated amount of uh, data package if you have something that's less than unlimited and they've split up the settings section into multiple areas. You have just wireless stuff, you have device stuff, and then you have personal settings. And down at the bottom here you have system settings. And uh, so far they've announced, because oddly enough they've launched 4.03 for the Nexus S before they actually did for the Galaxy Nexus, but supposedly it's coming out in the next couple of weeks for the Galaxy Nexus, and there's actually a couple of things that they've enhanced, I guess, excuse me. So you can see I'm running 4.2, and unfortunately the Verizon version of the Galaxy Nexus, unlike the GSM version, has to be approved by Verizon like anything else. So it's not going to be as convenient as the GSM version where they just Google pushes it out directly. This actually has to be pushed out from Verizon. So they probably have to test it for a couple of weeks to make sure that the actual um, build is good enough for their devices. Uh, other than that, I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. Um, oh, you used to be able to click and hold and get to your uh, widgets but they've now added it now it's just hold down to get to your wallpapers but if you want to get to your widgets they actually put it with the application drawer so if you click on the application drawer you can either pan over all the way and there they are or you can tap you can use the tabs that says apps or uh, widgets and you pan through just like anything else and then if you want to use one you just click it and you can it doesn't show you all your windows at the same time like it does in uh, Honeycomb, but you can easily just pull over to the edge and get to whatever window you want and let go, and then it'll set itself down. So, it's uh, it's come a long way from Android 1.0, you know. I can't even remember the code name for that, but uh, for the most part, all the widgets and apps that I use on a daily basis, they have worked so far for uh, the ICS version of Android 4.0. Um, I really like what they've done with the Google applications, kind of brought them all to the same, you know, standard and level. So like, if you go into your mail, you know, you see all the mail, plus they have this new bar down here on the bottom that's like the action bar and if you uh, click menu you get oops I guess nothing oh there 
you got settings and labels and such but if you actually choose oops if you choose one of the emails you know it just looks different it looks nice and uh, copying and pasting is something that they've done pretty well with I can't really show it to you straight up let me see if I can I'll show you the keyboard which I have thoroughly enjoyed plus the voice to text thing is awesome go into a new message so there's the keyboard doesn't look much different than uh, gingerbread but to do the voice to text it actually pulls up hey what are you doing today let's hang out oh they put that up top but still it continues it's a continuation so it doesn't stop and then you have to start it again which is very nice so if you want to keep talking while you're walking down the street or something you have the option to do that and uh, the correctionalness the autocorrect is really nice and it just pops it in there it's almost to that same level as the iPhone I would say so uh, as of right now I think those are the main parts that I can really think of that I'd want to show off the browsing is very nice they added tabs to it I've I've set up a whole bunch of folders except so that I can get to settings because again there's no menu button it's like on the uh, previous Android phones so I wanted to put it at a simple area so I just doubled that browser icon up as settings and browsing and so we'll pull up uh, looks like Google is in there last and if you've used honeycomb and you use like the labs you can actually make it so that the status bar on the top is gone when you pull it down you can get rid of that and you can actually pull your finger on pull it in from either side of the screen and you get this little like array of different options of like a new tab or if you want to search something so it just makes it more full screen uh, I personally don't like that uh, myself I'll see if I can show it to you go into settings go into the lab section and it's quick controls if I remember correctly so if you click that, full screen didn't really do anything for me. I didn't really look into it, but let's go back and back again. So see, no matter what, you don't get anything coming up on the top. So if I go from the right, you have tabs. Wow, tabs actually kind of shows you all the different tabs you have open. And then that search. And the bottom one is your menu button so you've completely lost all that so if you click it then it pulls up from the top and you can search something or you can type in a URL uh, but then menu you do that and it just pulls it right down in the middle so I guess if you, it's it's a personal preference thing uh, obviously it's just a lab so they're testing it per se but Google tests stuff forever obviously you could see Google Mail Gmail was in beta forever so until they want to make it mainstream, it'll just stay as a lab. But it's nice that it's there. And, uh, you know, it keeps it clean. So you really get that full screen no matter where you are on the web page. Pinching and zooming, awesome. And it takes, once you stop zooming, once you like let it sit for a second, it just, this text just gets crystal clear. It may be fuzzy for a second, but only a split second and it's crystal clear so and you don't get into that uh, checkerboarding that you get on the iPhone at this point uh, multitasking something really cool too they brought over from uh, honeycomb but honeycomb you could only just scroll through what you had now uh, you pretty much it's not really a force quit where you're actually quitting the application but it kinda just stops what it's doing in that specific window so you can see in Redbox it was in looking at movies so if I close it by sliding my finger 
over to the right and I open it again it'll be as if I closed out of whatever you were doing at that moment but the application may still have some remnants running in the background so if I, I'm in something in settings here like if I was inside a personal settings inside of the sound and I close it when I open it again it'll be back at the main menu same with Gmail if you're in a mail specific mail uh, letter or something and you slide it over it'll just open you up back to the stock gmail so it's still technically running and probably using the usual resources but it kind of cleans it up a little bit i like it because i actually have a palm uh what is it palm free one and uh that whole card system thing i mean i know it's a little bit different it's side to side closure but uh, it's still the idea of the card system, which is really cool. And I actually assume that they'll bring this into uh, ICS, obviously, for the tablet. So once Honeycomb kind of gets phased out, you'll all of them, all the uh, tablets will be running that ran Honeycomb will be running ICS, which will bring in the, these really cool features. So I know it's been about 20 minutes. But uh, I think I reviewed everything I wanted to about this. If I have anything else, I may uh, send out another video or any specifics. You guys can put a comment in the video area and I can answer it or do my best. Um, until next time, uh, have a good day, guys.